This is uh, from our football team, and, and everyone there says hi. Well, <laughs> hey, golly, thank you very much. All right, and they'd like to invite you to uh, the Army Navy game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, you know, I've had to miss an awful lot of things uh, because of this terrorist situation. I don't think that uh, security moves too far going to a game or anything. I was looking forward to throwing the ball out of the World Series and doing all sorts of things. And uh, you're the first. The first. Then shoot. Right. <laughs> the academy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I played football eight years myself, and if I was in the same situation, I'd have done it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I was. Uh, I really, I really uh, felt when I graduated that it should have been at least another year of football. I love it to. I like playing out there. I'm having, having a good time. It's all worth it, you know, not, not graduating. Well, it really is. Well, listen, will you give my very best to all of them and thank you very much. All right. Please right. tell them I shall be very proud to <laughs> this have it to display. <laughs> thank you, sir, for uh, having me here. Well, well it's, not, it's a great pleasure to have you here. And uh, what is it you so far this season? You've been doing about 130 yards a game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I read all about your uh, situation there. You did right. Can <laughs> <laughs> you get a family shot? Oh, oh yes. Well, we have in here. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Great experience last year. The graduation from there, meeting all of them. Yeah, well, that's something they, they really look forward to. Everybody was talking about it after graduation. I think it set a record for me <laughs> 1,035 hands. <laughs> 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 right. Right. And up till then, the Air Force Academy had had the thing with, the, with about 913. Yeah. Uh, now, listen, you know, you. You may get into a spot, all this in football, where you find yourself with a lot of hands to shake. <laughs> give him a little secret here. I won't give you any tips on football. <laughs> <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. Then all the way in there. And then no one can suddenly be crushing you. <laughs> 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 oh, <okay. laughs> he needs that. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> Pleasure to see you. Yes, thanks for inviting us. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. Okay. Our campaign, Don James, the head coach of uh, University of Washington, gave you a ball and you fired at the ball. And I think he gave it to one of the ladies that was a state senator and she fired it back to you. Oops. It's, uh, it's amazing what forward passing has done to that football. When I was playing, the football was much more oval, so that you really passed. There wasn't anyone that could run around like they do today, quarterback holding in one hand. You, you laid the ball on your hand, and it just laid there, and you, you threw it. You couldn't throw it, obviously, as far as they Well, you'd be surprised. Some guys uh, really were, were awful good at it. But uh, at that time, though, you could still drop kick. You know, that's disappeared because this ball, you know, there's no way to make it drop and bounce straight, but that other ball, the was a right? place kick. We had a, we had a drop kicker in the school that scored a few field goals for us. And he did, what you do is you hold the ball straight and step forward and drop it on the point and kick and it, as it as it lands. But uh, now these balls, well, you, don't, you wouldn't know which way it was going to bounce. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess that okay. joins the display. Okay. So see, this is a great pastor at the University of Illinois. And that is, still here, get that finger. Whoops. <laughs> get that finger, the pointing finger, back at the end. And that gives you accuracy. That's 
that okay? Like, I never do that. Yeah. That would be tiring. Because you know, if you just do that, you come down here. The point your finger right there. Come right down like aim the gun. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. Diversity, as always, is the, and diversity and excellence is the, are the keynotes. We've got test pilots and bankers and Russian linguists and a Vietnamese boat person refugee and every other profession is represented in one way or another. And it gives me great pleasure to, to introduce them to you. Well, Admiral, I'm very pleased to be here. This is, I guess, the sixth time now that I have met fellows, including back when I was governor as well as president. And uh, you have already mentioned that something that I was going to refer to is so typical of this land of ours and makes us so unique. We Americans are, are not an ethnic. We, we've come from every corner of the world and reading just the names alone indicated the great diversity that is our heritage. And I was going to mention particularly one, a young man here, Kian Pham, who uh, not too long ago was out on the Pacific in a boat with his family. He and his father had rescued 35 family members from Vietnam, and uh, their boat sank, and they ended up swimming for it. They made it, and he's here in our country. And between his graduate or, and his postgraduate education, he went back to Thailand to give help to refugees there. But all of you are a class, and I'm looking forward to handing out these papers to you and to welcome you here. You're going to be buried in, or in bureaucracy for a while. <laughs> and, uh, don't get too impressed with it. <laughs> no, I think, uh, one of the, again, one of the great unique heritages of our country is that the very people who founded it said that we should always retain our skepticism that government should not get out of line and too much in charge of the people. The people were in charge of government. But you're here with an opportunity to, to learn to see firsthand and this process has led to the development of people with talents that can make a contribution to government and can provide personnel for the executive branch and all, and we're very pleased and proud to have you here. So uh, watch government and make sure that I think you'll be impressed by its proper functions and how well they're done. And the only place to retain criticism is when government tries to do something government isn't supposed to do. So uh, let's sign them on. John Perry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom Bennett. Diversity. <laughs> Jerry Eckhart. Please. Uh, Karen Gallitz. Welcome. Charles Kubik. My pleasure, sir. Welcome. Please to have you here. Jerry Lundquist. Mr. President, I'm proud to be here. Tim Paris. Kian Fan. Very pleased to have you here. Thank you. And you'll be a part of our country. Thank you. Ron Quincy. Thank you very much. Pleased to have you. Charlene Quinn. Arnold Rackets. Anne Rondo. Richard Seibert. Fourteen is complete. Not at all. Very fine of you serving here with us. 
I know how proud all of you must be, and we're very proud to have those young men. And we deserve this. And we try to take good care of them. We know they'll take good care of us. <laughs> all right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Chance at that? Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, and there was a question I wanted to ask you, Mr. President, uh, which is at a time when everybody would love to be retired, how is it that uh, you still feel that you've got to run the biggest country in the world that is enormous burden that it represents? Well, I only sought this job because I thought there were some things that needed to be done that maybe I could help bring them about, and uh, I just don't want to leave the job unfinished. What time in your career, which has been a long career, political career, I mean, did you feel that you you could run for the White House that it possibly was offered to you, and that you you would win in the end? Well, I've always said that. Uh, you don't decide the people tell you whether. The truth is, I never in all of my life, coming up to the time that I finally ran for governor, I never uh, saw or thought I ever would see the public office. I, uh, as a performer and as an entertainer, I I've always thought that you kind of pay your way, so I supported causes and cam candidates that I uh, approved of. and. Being an entertainer, I could attract an audience and so forth, and therefore be useful at a fundraiser and things of that kind. Never did I ever dream in my wildest time that I would ever even want to be in public life. And then, uh, at a time in our country when our party was greatly divided and uh, a lot of friction, there was a group that came to me, and my first uh, reply was a refusal. This group that came wanted me to take the governorship. And finally, uh, they convinced me I had an obligation, I should do it, and that I could win. And so I ran. And uh, I found out that uh, after I had won and was in the office that where I had thought that I was giving up a career, which I did love uh, in the other business, that uh, I'd find this very dull. And I found out it wasn't at all. And, uh, then subsequently, years in the, the governor's office, there were people that came and on that basis said that I should try for this. And so I did. Uh, an American president, in fact, is impeded by the fact that uh, he can't run more than twice for the office. You're going to meet very soon Mr. Gorbachev, uh, who people say has got uh, quarter of a century of running this country ahead of him. Do you think this differences of organization I mean, of the governments uh, creates a, a different views of the long-term relations between two countries? No, I don't really, although I must tell you that I have come to believe, and not for myself, when this term is over, I'm very content to go, but I think that this country should look very seriously, our people should at that recent change in the Constitution which limited the President to two terms and uh, see if they don't feel that they have taken something away from democracy. After all, if the people want to continue, as they did in this country the one time for Roosevelt, uh, that if the people want someone to serve them, they should have the right to vote for them. It means that you, you would uh, put forward uh uh, an amendment uh, against the 22nd Amendment? Well, if I, did, if I did that, I would do it at such a time that, and make it very plain that I was not doing it with myself in mind. I was doing it for whoever would be president from now on. Which would be, I suppose, for the Republican Party. Uh, who knows? The only time it was ever uh, four terms, uh, instead of two, was uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a Democrat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Well, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello there.
Jackie and Emory King is present. It's nice to see you, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm about to uh, end my tenure as a White House correspondent. Let, let us get a picture, oh, sure. and then we'll put you in the middle of the line. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no. Thank you. That's a pretty good picture. She. <laughs> I forgot pictures. I was actually really happy with that sign. Sure. I'm so excited about coming. I forgot pictures. <laughs> Fine. Yes. Okay. We Excellent. have uh, uh, some nice pictures at the ranch a couple of years ago, I guess, at Fest Park oh. that you may remember because you were kind enough to sign one for our parents for a Christmas gift. But we never got your autograph for ourselves. Oh, so we'd see. like to send that one back and as well as a couple of the Christmas cards. Oh, we'd be very happy to. It'd be too much yeah. of an inconvenience. Nice. See if they get in here. Okay. And we also, uh, wait one second. This is just a bookmark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that's very kind of you. For you just oh, souvenir so you don't forget us. Thank you very yeah. much. Right. That's very nice. Yeah. May I also ask a favor? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I covered Mrs. Reagan quite a bit uh, the last couple of years on her trip to Rome and some of her drug trips, and uh, I'm afraid I probably won't have a chance to see her to say goodbye, but if you could remember, I'd appreciate it if you tell her thanks. I really enjoyed my experience covering her trips. I should tell her no later than tonight when she'll be calling Great. me from California. Oh, Great. That would be nice of you. I'd be very happy to. Well, you've had an enjoyable time. Thank you very much. Oh. You're leaving us. <laughs> I am. Emory, I, I hope to be in Emory's Washington. Just for as president, won't be able to yell at you from out of the pen there <laughs> On Sundays, when you never seem to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again. Thank you. You know, the truth of the matter is, I don't. When I get inside the door with that helicopter out there, I then turn around to others and I say, What were they asking? What were they asking? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Well, it was very nice. All right. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Best of luck to you. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Okay.